Hello, everybody. Hello. Hola, buenas tardes. Buenas Hola. tardes. <ríe> ¿Cómo estás? <ríe> Excelente. Excelente. Okay, next next word. Excelente. <ríe> How are you? Hi, 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 Dietfried. Hi, Monica. Hi, uh, Lenovo. I don't know who is Lenovo. However, uh, Gnita, uh, Mats. Hello, good night. <laughs> uh, Rosa from uh, from Canada. Yes, and Sue. Hello. So is joining. The topic is the story of my life today. But it's not exactly only story of uh, Jeff's life, but this is a meeting um, for everybody for sharing the stories of their life. So if you have anything uh, so excited to share about your life, about your stories in your MLMs, uh, let other people know. Uh, probably it would be very inspiring. Uh, last time uh, we get we has uh, had a guest, uh, Jordan Adler. He inspired us a lot. And uh, today our special star, Jeff from Wildy, my sponsor, my best friend, uh, Don Spela, best friend. And <laughs> I never, never, ever met uh, such a nice uh, person as he is. So uh, I would like to uh, show other people um, his approach to network marketing, his uh, uh, and our, of course, uh, own your life approach, because we are teaching lifestyle approach of uh, doing network marketing. So if anybody wants to uh, get to know something more, go deep into this topic, just join our meetings. Uh, we are organizing this two times um, a month. Um, one meeting is with Don and one meeting is with Jeff. So today we, we have our topic with Jeff, the story of your life, my life. <laughs> Don, uh, Don uh, Jeff, the stage is yours. I appreciate that, that you found a time to, to join our meeting and, and say something for us because I know and we know that you are very busy in um, um, developing the, the, the app and, and a new updated book. So uh, thank you once again. And thank you guys for all, uh, for all of you for joining and your time for, for being here. I appreciate it so much. So let's start. Okay, Jeff, are you ready? Right. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Hi, everybody. Thank you for that introduction, Adriana. I appreciate that very kind and I'll try to live I'll try to live up to it um, but you know most importantly uh, Adriana you and the rest of the, the group here you know uh, I say it all the time but I'll say it again um, uh, thank you for being here you know most people you know have things going on in their life important things family business all kinds of stuff and and uh, you, we feel pulled especially today in all different directions don't we you know but you guys and gals are here and I can tell you there's a lot of things I'm not good at, but one of the things I'm pretty good at is being observant. And over the last 30 years, uh, I have observed all right, that the people that show up to these kinds of webinars, um, and I'm not just talking about the ones that watch the recordings, that, that's important too. You should do that. And, and of course, if you're working and everything, you know you have to do that. But if you can be on a live webinar, there's just something about being with people live that is different um i have my theories on that but the ones that show up are generally the ones that make it big in network marketing that's just my observation um and you're here so what does that tell you you're in that special group and i'm not just saying that i mean it and i thank you from from my heart and my head so anyway having having said that let me tell you uh, let me start off by asking you a question, okay? Um, because this this get together today is basically about the importance of asking questions, you know. Um, <clears throat> and I, I guess I'll ask the question first, since it's a, it's our topic. You know, what do you guys consider to be the most important skill in network marketing? You can put it in the chat box, or you can just yell it out, whatever you want. What do you think? What's the most important skill in network marketing? 
Any guesses? Don't be shy. Just see here in the chat. You can also comment on Facebook if you wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess we're on Facebook. That's pretty cool. Yes, we are together. Is that a, is that a first? Have we ever done that before? Uh, no, not the first time, but uh, we will continue doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, sound, that sounds cool. Some of them, uh, Dietrich said, be teachable. Uh, Rosa said, consistency. Monica said, realizing people. And some more uh, answers. What does liaising people? What's that mean? That's leasing. Leasing. The leading people. Leading people. Leading, I guess. Yes. Okay. Leading got people. It, got it. Got mm -hmm. it. All right. Be teachable. De uh, ah, listening. Sorry. Great. Listening. Listening people. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> because it's uh, yeah, in Polish. Well, thank thank you everybody who's who's right in there. Rosa, Monica, Didfried. Yeah, you're close. You're close. Any other guesses? Who else? Just unmute yourself. You can also you can yeah, also you can tell. Go ahead, chirp so, out. Uh, Rosa said uh, to solve people problem. Solve people's problem. That's uh, that's great. Yeah, all these things are great. They're all important. I mean, you got to have them all. But if there was one thing, uh, I haven't seen it put up there yet. One more. <laughs> Okay, we'll give it another 15 seconds. Warm and friendly, Sue said that. Very, very important. That's my number one characteristic. I don't care if they have all the rest of them. You know, if they're if they're reliable and have good communication and people skills and and have credibility and influence with their peers and industrious, that's great. And that's what initiative, we're initiative accountability. Accountability. That's yeah. Uh, that's yeah, that's important. That's important. But if people aren't going back to my my thought there, people aren't warm, open, easy to talk to. Life is way too short. I, they, you know, they'll drive you crazy. So that's my number one criteria. Okay, let me let me just 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 tell you. I don't think anybody uh, guessed it, but thanks for trying. It's it's asking questions. Okay, asking questions without a question. I would say the number two is you know when you ask a question, you're looking for an answer, right? So the second most important skill set in network marketing would be listening because if you ask a great question but you don't listen very well that's not going to do any good they go hand in hand but um have you ever been on a webinar where anybody told you that that the number one skill is asking great questions raise your hand let, let me know if anybody's ever been on a webinar where people talk about that all right no one now, is, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Since it's the number one skill, all right. Because if you can, if you can ask great questions, you can guide ninety-five percent of a conversation. You can steer it where you want it. You know, there's so many things you can do if you're good at asking great questions. I re I recommend that go to Amazon, buy some good books on asking great questions. Okay, Tony Robbins said, if you ask enough of the right questions to enough of the right people, you'll get enough of the right answers. Isn't that interesting? But notice that he just didn't say, if you ask enough questions to people, you'll get enough answers. It's if you ask enough of the right questions, all right, to enough of the right people, you'll get enough of the right answers. So you see how all this stuff ties together. You know, and it all it all ties with what I've talked about many times on webinars. Um, you know, one one webinar I I do, we call it the half dozen things that make 95 percent of all the difference. You know, and what what are those six things? Because it'll kind of complement what we're talking about today. You know, the first three things of those six. Right. First three is understanding the own your life system. OK, not not only intellectually, but from emotionally like and, and also why it's in the the order that it's in that's for another topic we're going to talk about that today but wh why not lead with the product and then give the book afterwards what why not well there's a lot of great reasons why not okay you can build a business that way it'll just take you 10 times longer but you can build a business that way okay if you want to spend 30 years until you own your life you can do it that way all right but but it will save you as long as you share the book but if you 
if you look for people who want something, who want a better life, and you connect with their heart up front as to how you can help them, and then you teach them, you, you know, they, they hang around. They don't care if the product tastes bad the first time they taste it. That doesn't matter. They want to own their life, okay? So they stick around and they find another product that they do like the taste of. You see what I mean? But if you leave with a product and they get that product first before they read the book and they taste the product or have a bad experience or don't have any experience with the product, guess what? All right, that's what they're thinking network market. Oh, I don't know if my friends will like the taste of, taste of this product. So there's a lot of, when you use the order of the system, it solves practically all of your problems, okay? So that's the first th three things of the six. The next three things are what? <clears throat> Anybody want to, what's the next one? Anybody? Being consistent. Anybody? Selecting the what? The right people. Selecting the right people. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And then once you select the right people, once you have them, <clears throat> what do you got to do real fast? You got to get them started what? Anybody? I know Angie, you kind of knows the answers. Anybody else? You got you to gotta get them started quickly and efficiently because the right kinds of people that have those characteristics we're looking for, they tend to be impatient. And if you don't get some points on the board and, and wins in the win column, they start... They start looking. It doesn't matter how great they are. It doesn't matter the qualities. They're impatient. They tend to go looking for greener pastures, okay? And then once you get them started, then the third most, then the next thing, well, of the top six here is working down group immediately. So understanding the, the, the system, understanding the order of the system, why it's so incredibly important. Some people I've been teaching the system to for you know decades and it's like they still lead with the product or they still lead with a business opportunity for whatever reason they don't get it you got to get the emotional connection you got to have people who want something they want a better life they want to own their life time money and health at a time in their life when they can enjoy it with the people they love the most if you don't have that first okay you're probably not going to make it in network marketing because, and I'll talk about this in a couple of minutes, when you lead with a product or you lead with a business, you put yourself in the category of what 99.9% .9 of the people teach in network marketing, even the top distributors out there. And uh, I'll come back to that in a second, okay? So, um, <clears throat> so remember that, uh, learn to ask great questions, all right? And let's talk a little bit about uh, what these so-called so top distributors and other companies um, do most of the time. You know, they, they, they basically talk recruit, recruit, recruit. You know, let's, let's bring them in the door and then pray that they make it, all right? Um, anybody that can fog a mirror, you know, bring them in. Get them on our webinar and let's, let's get them in. And if they make it, great. If they don't make it, you know, geez, I feel bad, but... I can always recruit somebody else. I love, you know, I love the sentence. Pray for <laughs> for them to come and make it. Oh my you, God. <laughs> you know, do you do you realize what that mentality has done <laughs> to this industry? It's scared away. 95% of the people in the world, if they think that's what it is, that's what they got to do. I mean, most people can't even take one or two no's before they quit. Okay. And you have these top distributors out there that are just stay consistent, you know, and consistency is important, but the right type of consistency is important. I mean, you can be consistent in a lot of stupid things, right? You can consistently do stupid things. That's not going to get you anywhere in life. What we talk about is cons with consistency is consistently doing the right things. It's not talked about nearly enough. Okay. And, um, you know, I talked, some of you probably heard me talk about my friend who had a conversation with the founder, one of the co-founders of Amway, Rich DeVos. And he, this is a personal story from one of my best friends in the business. Unfortunately, he's, he's gone now. He passed away. But he was talking to Rich and he said, I'll shortcut it. He said, Rich, how many people did you, did you guys, uh, 
did it take to build Amway? How many people did you guys re recruit to build Amway? And Rich, Rich said, oh, about, about 500 people. You know, he brought in about 500. And, uh, and then Bob asked him, well, how many of those 500 actually built Amway? And what do you think his answer was? Go ahead, Dietrich. D Dietrich. Five. Five people. Okay. Yes. We'll talk about that. How many, how many of you on this webinar right here uh, are looking forward to sponsoring 500 people to find your five? You looking forward to that? That's a lot of network marketing funerals, right? That's that's 495 network nice. marketing funerals that you're going to be attending. That's what's going on there. <laughs> so if you don't if you don't learn to ask the right questions, because folks, it's the 80-20 rule, you know, the Pareto principle, right? And it, it doesn't only apply to network marketing. It applies to anything. 20% of all the people bring in do 80% of all the work. And 20% of them, 20% of the 20% do 80% of all the work. So the better questions that you can ask to get to the right people. Now, when I say right people, I don't mean better people, okay? Sometimes people get mad at me, you know, especially especially girls, women. They go, you're you know, picking on people, you know, I don't mean that God loves everybody the same, you know, most of my family and my friends, you know, the ones I grew up with from when I was young, they're in that 80% category, which I really, I wouldn't want them in my business. Like even if they begged me, all right, because I know they wouldn't do the right things to succeed. That doesn't make them bad people. It just, it just means and I love them dearly, okay? It just means that I don't want them in my business. If you had an engineering firm, would you hire like people who were like lousy at engineering or didn't or were terrible at math? Would you do that? No, but that doesn't make them bad people. That just means they were, you know, they're not cut out for engineering. That's all. So the so I think you get my drift, you know. Um okay, let's talk. So that's Amway, right? 500 to find the five that build Amway. They never even got the sixth for diamond, you know, but that's another story. Um, then there's the top distributors. We watched a webinar recently. I watched, you know, a, a webinar, webinar last week with the number one distributor of a particular company. I'm not going to name any names. Okay. And, and this is a common theme. You don't even have to name any names because this goes on everywhere. He's, you know, th this guy's one of my best buddies in the business. All right. He's been in the business a long time. Top distributor in the industry. Um, sponsors three to four people or recruits. I shouldn't say sponsor because sponsoring is actually asking the right questions and getting in there and working with them and you know, all that kind of thing. All right. But for 18, 19 years, he sponsored three, four people a month. Do the math on that. OK, take take three times a month, three a month times uh, 12 months in a year times 18 what's that come up with about 600 some people who he who he recruited and he'll be the first one to admit it and this this is a common theme too they it's almost always the same thing here okay these people that sponsor hundreds of people all right 650 in this case five six seven eight of them make them all their money the other ones just hang out you know, they, they're customers for a while. The average customer, by the way, in network marketing lasts about three months and then they go away. And after a year, it's about 3% of the original customers are still there. How can you build a business like that? You know, own building a business to be able to own your life. Let's define that time, money, and health at a time in your life when you can, <laughs> excuse me, my, my landscaper's outside my window here. I got to tell him to cut down his, his uh, motors. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Moses uh, from Mexico. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting uh, you. Hold on, can you, can you hear me? Because I got a bunch of engines blasting outside my window. Can you hear me okay? Okay, okay, go ahead, Moses. Yes. Um, this is the first time that, that I get into in your meeting soon. I'm nice to you. I'm very <laughs> glad to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, Moses, yeah. yeah. And I, I just have a question uh, talking about this topic that you are introducing. 
uh, I understand that your point is not to uh, recruit uh, an, a big amount of people, right? Uh, because I'm taking a course, uh, a free course uh, this week, and I have been taught in this course that the main objective is to recruit, uh, let's say, 1,000 people. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, this guy who is teaching this uh, course uh, recruited 4,000 people in one week. Uh, we were assisting in this meeting. And he says, imagine uh, if I get 10% of these people as my customers, how many people I will have? Okay. Uh, but yesterday I talked to my uh, sponsor here in Mexico, whose name is Adele. And he told me literally that it, it won't work because at the end of the time, I won't have as the people uh, just uh, contacted or recluded. The most important thing here is to have a personal contact, know the people, know their goals, their emotions, uh, to have a connection with the people and work one by one at a time. Uh, can you please explain a little bit about this? Because I'm confused. Because uh, on the other course, I guess they want numbers. But as you mentioned, if I don't have, a, if I just focus on having numbers of people, uh, how can I be able to manage to attend them correctly? Yeah, well, that's 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 a lot okay, of questions. That's my question. let, let me let me just say this. First of all, you got to understand what business that you're in. Okay, what they're doing is they're playing the game of addition and subtraction. Okay, Net network marketing is about multiplication. It's about duplication. All right, network marketing and and they're playing the game of traditional sales. You know, load them in the front door and pray to God that some of them stick around. Okay, it. <clears throat> There is something to say about the law of averages. I mean, if you throw enough mud against the wall, some is going to stick. OK, but I don't deal with it. We don't deal with exceptions. I mean, if you go out, if you bet on enough thousand to one shots out at the track, you might the horse track, you might win once in a while. But the chances are that you're not going to. You know, most people go broke out at the track. They go broke at the casinos. And that's basically the game that they're playing. They're playing the traditional sales game adding and subtracting and then praying that they stick around okay uh 99.9999999 it doesn't it doesn't work okay network marketing and traditional sales it mixes like oil and water which means it doesn't you know traditional sales like a like a sale, sales manager what they do is they recruit sales people to go to work for them and their company okay and that's that's what their job is. They're, they are recruiters. All right. They want that person to be a great salesperson so that they can bring in money for the company because that's the model. All right. That they have. So it's a sales model. Nothing wrong with that. It just doesn't work in network marketing. Now, look at network marketing. Network marketing. We do almost the exact opposite, Moses. OK, like in network marketing, I would sponsor you in this fictitious example. I, I don't sponsor you, but in this example, Moses, I would sponsor you, okay? And then I would go to work for you. You see, it's almost the exact opposite. And when, and then of course, that doesn't mean that you don't do any work. That just means that I help you go to work for your best people. And then we're, we're, we're a team all getting together to help everybody succeed. Okay, so it's completely different. And then you have to remember that you have to remember human nature. And it comes back to this 95% uh, of the people in the world, like for real, that's the statistics, want nothing to do with traditional sales. So it doesn't matter. So if you're doing a mass recruiting type of thing, or you're selling to recruit, or you're leading with a product or a service, or you're leading with a business opportunity, 
those 95%, they see that as selling. They're not comfortable with it. They're not going to do it. You know, you might be able to you know, get them in for a while, but almost all of them end up quitting, which means you'll never have any duplication take place. You'll have addition, right? And then subtraction because they leave. And what these, you know, most of these top network marketers are out there doing, <clears throat> they're recruiting, 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 recruiting. And the reason that they have to do that is because at some point in time, more people are falling out the back end then they're able to recruit. So to keep their numbers, they have to keep on selling. But what does that do for our industry? And what does that do for the people that they recruit? You know, what it does is it just, it just, it wreaks havoc on the industry, okay? So we don't teach that. You know, it's a relationship business. I sponsor you. I learn all about you. If I, if I sponsored you, Moses, first thing I do is send you a homework assignment tell you to fill it out. I want to learn about you. I want to learn about your the five to 10 people that you have the best relationship in the world with who you know are sharp people. And I want to learn about them. Okay. It's a relationship business. I want to learn about you. I want to learn about them. All right. And then we get to know each other and then we build a bond because if you're just recruiting people and praying that they win, that's equivalent. Like this is a person. Okay. This pencil's a person. Sign them up. And, it, and it, what happens? 95% of them, the statistics tell us, they're gone. Oh, well, if you're a salesman, I, I better recruit some more people. But then spend enough time with them, they're gone. What we do is we look for people who want a better life, who want to own their life. We get in there and learn about them, all right? We ask some great questions to see if the timing is right for them, if they want to do it from here, but more importantly, from here. And then we build a relationship with them. OK, so we bring in the right people. Right. We select the right people, warm, open, easy to talk to, reliable, good communication, people skills, uh, um, uh, industrious people who can take yeah. some direction here. And we build a relationship with them. Now, I don't care how strong you are. You could be the strongest man in the world. If I build a relationship going in depth, I help you sponsor Joe and I help you and Joe sponsor Tom and on down the line as you're going in depth. Those are relationships. They're bonds that can never break. And that's why if you work, select the right people, get them started quickly and efficiently and work in depth, it always works. But if you're doing it the way that your friend was talking about, it's a hit and miss, mostly miss, and almost everybody quits that way. It's not network marketing. They're in a network marketing company, but they're not doing network marketing. How would you like to have, how would you like to be a, have, have a heart surgeon you know, if you had a heart problem operating on your heart and he never went to heart surgery school, he, he never understood heart surgery. Would that be a good idea? That's exactly what goes on in network marketing. You know, so that was that that was a great question, Moses. So but but we have webinars and things. We talk about all that stuff. So um, and they'll all be in the community and app once, when, once it gets up and running. So I recommend you get that and you'll you'll have access. to all oh, that stuff. Thank you so much. Uh your example was really amazing and also oh, thank you <laughs> so uh, uh yeah it's it, skills moses it it's gave me the whole skills. picture about this yeah but they're simple skills it's not it's not hard to learn how to ask the right questions you just have to know to ask the right questions we'll we'll teach you the questions to ask you know we'll teach you the right people we'll teach you how to get them started and, and work efficiently and effectively and go down group we'll we teach all that stuff. And it's the, it's really very, very, it's very, it's very simple what we teach, but it's very, very sophisticated. And that's a, that's a combination. That's an odd combination that you hardly ever see, but it works every single time for the people who do it. So great question, Moses. Let, let me get back to talking a little bit about, you know, asking questions and the track that I was on. Okay. <clears throat> Thank so you. Anyway, out of, out of let's look at the stats everybody about one out of every hundred people all right are like you know how don talks about gold ships right in his book the gold ships all right there another word for that is is, is a leader you know someone who you know about one out of every hundred persons a leader um these people they're really easy to spot all right they typically they're like always going in you know five six different directions they're they're, they're, they're going, they, they might not be doing the right things. And I don't mean in just network marketing. I mean, in anything. Okay. If they're 
working with their kids sports team or they're involved in their you know corporation or whatever they're doing they're usually going 100 miles an hour there's there's always a cloud of smoke coming up from behind them okay all right that's about one out of every 100 people they don't they don't need people to give them a you know slap in the butt to get them going they they have they're inner motivated they they're they're driven by something inside of them but there's only about one out of every 100 people like that maybe maybe two okay and then then you have uh, the other part of those 100 people you have about 10 workers all right these are people that they, they can be gold ships too but they're different than leaders okay workers are workers they they work they're really hard workers you know them think of the think of the two or three or four people in your life that you know are hard workers okay like if you had to if you were moving from your one house to another house and you invited people to come over and help you out maybe you invited 10 people it's kind of like it's kind of like if t first of all 10 of them if you invite 10 it's probably whittles down to six because four of them will say they can't do it for some reason right <laughs> and then the six that show up there's probably one or two of them that are really hard workers the other ones are drinking your kool-aid and eating your food that you put out for them right but you know who they are you, you know the workers work you know um and Folks, of 100 people, the one or two leaders and the 10 workers, that's your market. Those are the people that you're looking for, okay? So why, why would you want to have to go through 100 people, though? I mean, most people, remember what I said earlier? Most people, after they get, get a one or two no's, they're done. They can't take it. You know, they're the, the, most people are the 95%. They... They don't like the fact that their friend or their their cousin or their brother or sister rejected them. That happens one or two or three times, and basically they're gone, or they just are, you know, they just become a customer and they don't do anything anymore. And that's that's really sad because it doesn't have to be that way. Okay. All right. But your market is about 89 or about about 10 or 11 people out of every hundred people. Okay. Well, what what about the other 89 people? Okay, if there's 10, if there's one leader and 10 workers, that leaves 89 left. What what do you what do you do with the, those people? Do you do you try to sponsor those people there? All right. Um go ahead if you want to, but you could be the master distributor of that company could be um, you know, Jesus, for example. Okay. You know, Jesus and the apostles, right? I mean, it's like <laughs> like G Jesus did the Sermon on the Mount, you know, he, if you believe in this, okay, he, he raised people from the dead, he, he made people who were born blind see, the deaf hear, he did it in front of hundreds of people, they, they saw him do it, and that was about 2,000 years ago, if I have my numbers right, and, he, and Jesus, who was the best network marketer there ever was, all right, he only got about 10% of them. About 10% of them still show up, go to church, right? And they, where's the other 90%? Why couldn't Jesus recruit them to Christianity? Okay. Let me tell you something. I mean, I, I get a, I get a kick. But my, my mentor years ago, Bob Schmidt, used to talk about this. If Jesus can only get 10% of them, what makes you think you're going to be able to get any more? Okay. You're not. People do exactly what they want to do, okay? Those 89 or 90 people left, my my buddy Bob Schmidt, I used to get a kick out of it. He used to say, <laughs> he used to say, those 89 people, they're like people like they they, they carry the flu bu bug. They they carry the flu bug, you know, they give it to everybody else, but they never catch the flu. <laughs> I always thought that was funny, you know, but it's like, so your market, folks, is your about... 10 or 11 people out of 100, okay? Now, that might scare some of you off, right? But don't don't let it because it's very easy to find them. All you have to do is ask the right questions. That's all you have to do. Because if you go through 100 of them, first of all, most people are going to quit. They're never going to go through 100 of them. 100 of them. But, if you, if you, but the ones that do go through 100, if they don't understand what I'm talking about here, right? They're salespeople. They're the only ones that can do that. I did it when I was in the 90s. I recruited 114 people 
90% of them told me they were going to build a business and I wasn't duplicated in one spot after a year. And I was like, why, why is this? A and the reason it is, is what I just told you, because only about 10 out of every hundred are going to do something. All right. So your job is to find them and you find them by asking the right questions. That's it. Okay. Now I'm not going to get into the weeds today about the right questions, all, all the right questions. Uh, I'll mention a few of them. Okay. But just remember that. And it makes your job so simple, you know, to find a leader and, and you're going to ask yourself these questions. And then when you sponsor someone, you're going to ask them these same questions. Okay. First of all, who, who are we looking for here, right? To find those, that one leader and those 10 workers, because they are going to build your business. And a, a network marketing organization is built up, built up with, you know, maybe anywhere from three to 10, like, you know, really serious coachable leaders. Typically it can be, this isn't always the case, but typically, and all the rest of these people are workers. Okay. So that's your market. So what do we do? All right. Well, the first thing we do is we ask, you know, we, you know, you're looking for track record. Okay. Track record, track record, track record. People are very predictable creatures. So you want to ask the questions about these people. What did they do in the past? All right. Were they successful at what they did? If they're a stay-at-home mom or dad, are they great? Are they really good at it? You know, if they work at a corporate job, whatever it is, are they, a, are they a heart surgeon? Are they a, are they a, jan a janitor? Are they an engineer? What, what, what do they do and do they do it well? Okay. And if you ask that question, you like people ask it of yourself. Think of your, the people that, you know, you have a relationship that are really great at what they do. Okay. So that's track record. That's two words that kind of like a, it's an umbrella over the rest of the words. And I already mentioned under them, you know, you're looking for people who are kind, you know, warm, open, easy to talk to, reliable, have credibility and influence with their peers. Cause it's easy for them to ask their friends to do something because they have credibility with them. People who are industrious, that's, that's people who are industrious are like, they're, they, they don't use excuses. They just like, if they run into an obstacle, they, they go over it or under it or around it, or they call their upline. They do whatever it takes. How many people do you know like that? I would bet not many because there's only about one out of every hundred. <laughs> so you have to ask the question, right? My favorite question to find gold ships because you don't want to have to go through a hundred. That's like Germany after the war. Most people aren't going to do it anyway. So you, you ask the question, you know, uh, did, uh, Dietfried, you know, if I, if you were to bet $10,000 of your own money on any two people that you know, who you know would do great at this if they decided to get involved, who would those one or two people be? Okay. And then you just be quiet and you let that person talk. First, you ask yourself that question, of course, and that's going to be part of your short list. We don't make long lists in our system. Long lists scare people away because it reminds them of like, you know, if they ever sold encyclopedias or if they ever, you know, sold vacuum cleaning and you know, when they were in college or they were involved in something where there was sales involved, insurance sales. And, and remember, most of these people who were involved in sales. A lot of them, you know, they're, they, they, they didn't know they weren't salespeople until they got involved and then they got rejected and they realized they weren't cut out for sales. So they remember what happened during that sales experience. And one of the things they remember, I was in the insurance business when I got out of school, you know, for about four years. And what did they tell me? Make a huge list and contact everyone and try to sell them insurance. Okay. So if you have people making a huge list, that's like one of the worst mistakes you could ever be because in their head, they're thinking, oh my gosh, this is what we did before. I can't do this. And they might not tell you that because they might be embarrassed. They might think it's great that maybe they look at you and you come from a sales background and they, they think, wow, you're really good at that. Maybe they're embarrassed to say they're not good at it. Who knows? People, you know, a lot of times won't tell you what's in their heart. They just won't do anything. And that tells you what's in their heart. They're, they're thinking, I can't, because everybody wants to, I mean, 99.9% .9 of the people want a better life, right? I mean, who doesn't want time, money, and health at a time in their life when they can enjoy it with the people they love? Those people are everywhere, okay? That's why our system gives you 20 times the potential income because most people are tripping over themselves, over the 5% salespeople because they think the salespeople are gonna get them rich. But what they don't understand is that salespeople are the least likely to make it because they sell and they scare away the other 95%.
when you use, and, that, and by the way, that doesn't mean salespeople shouldn't get involved in network marketing. Salespeople can be fantastic at network marketing, but under one condition and one condition only, maybe two conditions. They learn network marketing, just like the heart surgeon has to learn heart surgery. The network, the, the salesperson has to learn it, what it is and what it isn't. And then they have to teach it because it's a sponsor teach business. It's not a selling business. Selling doesn't work. It'll work short, short term. It'll work for some retail money. I'm a great example of those 114 people that said they wanted to build a business the first year that I was in it. None of them were, I wasn't duplicated in one line. But what I don't usually talk, talk about is I had about 200 additional customers because I had this demonstrable product and I put a magnetic sign on my car and people look at it and I go, well, I can tell you about it in 30 minutes or show you in 30 seconds. Now, who does that? You know who does that? Salespeople. And if you're in sales, that is a great attribute. All right. But if you're in network marketing, it, it's called failure. You will fail because who, first of all, who's going to put a magnetic sign on their car? especially if they have a nice car. Like most people aren't going to do that. Only salespeople do that. And if someone glances at their sign, how many people are going to say, hey, I see you glanced at my sign. I can tell you about it in 30 minutes or show you in 30 seconds. Most people are not going to do that, okay? But see, I didn't know any better. No one had this webinar back in those days, right? I read an article that said, you, you, you know, you find, you sell products, you sign up salespeople to help you sell products and you can make a lot of money in network marketing. I thought, wow, that sounds pretty good. I like I like to make a lot of money. I was broke back in those days. I needed to make a lot of money and I was willing to sell because I came from a sales background. But I realized fairly quickly something was not right here. I was in the wrong business to be selling. So please, folks, take this to heart. OK, don't sell. OK, sponsor and teach. Use the system. And you'll ultimately get way more customers at the back end anyway, because if someone wants a better life, and then they look, go through the first five chapters of the book so that they learn how to drive, right? They learn what network marketing is and what it isn't. Their mindset's completely shifted, especially the smart ones, you know, the ones that fit that criteria that I talk about, industrious, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, they go, wow, that's interesting. I, I never knew that. You know, I thought it was selling because everybody thinks it's selling. Look at what the top distributors do all over the world. Sell, 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 sell. That proves it, right? OK, so, you know, so now here's the great part. OK, and here's the biggest guarantee of your success. And it's where most people drop the ball just because you're excited about your business. And I'm excited about my business. And we pick we're selective and we pick the right people. Right. And we have them go through the system. We're doing it all right. Does that necessarily mean that that person is ready to jump in your business. They could be the perfect person on earth for network marketing. What's the probability of them going like, oh, so glad you called me today, uh, Elsie. Thanks, I'm ready to go. Because remember, if you're selective with your people, these are action people. They're, they're always involved in something, you know, like they're going a hundred mile an hour, very hard to get their attention. You gotta ask the right questions quick. And if you sponsor them, you got to get them, you got to get them into action fast because you got about two or three weeks or, you know, wins in the win column. You got to get some because they're, if you, if they lose confidence in you, they will leave. Okay. Luckily, our system takes care of all that. All right. If you, if, you know, if you learn it and then you, you have someone in your upline that can help you, especially, but um, that's, what's going to be great about the community and the app. Okay. Because we're going to have in this community an app all these like-minded people, people who want to own their life, time, money, and health. That's why they're going to be there. All right. And they're going to be using the system and they're going to be having success with the system. And they're going to share their testimonials. And you guys are going to be doing the same thing. And it's going to be all these like-minded people who don't want to sell. They want to own their life. So and it might start off with 20 people and then 50 people and then 100 people and then 500. A thousand. Imagine having a thousand people in a community and app that are sharing all these these success stories and testimonials using the system, duplicating down three, four, five levels deep in quality people. 
and putting up numbers, you know, this is, these are fake people. This would be Adriana and someone that she sponsors and then she helps them and going, driving it deep. Okay. Cause that's how you build income. That's going to be around for a long time. Okay. All of them haven't, all those people bonded relationships coming in the same way. They all know it works. All right. Because that's why that's why you build it. So all these people have bought into the system. And if you buy into the system long enough, you're going to have success. And then you're going to be sharing that success in the community and the app. It's going to be a vicious cycle of success. And when you sp start sponsoring people using the system, and then they see that you know, you're involved in the community, you have the app, and they get involved. Now, all of a sudden, you got these really... These selective people, the right people exposed to lots of the right people here in all these success stories. And there's going to be problems too. You know, I mean, people are going to, well, how do you do this? How do you do that? And then, but the kind of people, think of the kind of people we're looking for, right? Warm, open, easy to talk to, industrious, uh, uh, have credibility. And you have all these people in one spot. Do you think these people, not all of them maybe, but a lot of them are going to want to help? the other people in the community, if they're having some trouble? The answer is yes. They're, it's going to be like, you're going to be in your company with your sponsor and your team, but then you're going to have this community and app with people from all over the world, these lovely people, all willing to be, to help you as well. I mean, it 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 doesn't get any better. There's There's never been anything in network marketing history like you're going to see, okay? Uh, does that mean it's going to be perfect? No. I mean, as soon as we launch, we're, one of the things that we're going to be doing in the community and the app is asking questions. Like one of the first questions I'll put out there, start thinking about it now. Why are you here? What do you want to get out of this community? What is your goal? You know, and then and then we're going to have dialogue. Think about that. You know, you ask a great question because I don't want to be talking. I, I don't like to hear myself talk. I like ne hardly ever watch my webinars and stuff. I, I, I can't stand watching myself. I don't know about... I, I don't know if a lot of people are like that, but I don't want to be like the person like talking in, in, in the community and stuff like that once we get it up. And I mean, here and there, once or twice a week, you know, share something, do some webinars and things like that. That's always fun. But I want the people, we we want the people in the community and in the app to be able to share. And it's, it's a big like community of lovely people who have the right qualities, who want to own their life. Who are all trying to help other people achieve their their goals, uh, financial freedom, owning your life. I mean, it's not gonna. It, it doesn't get any better than that. Okay. So so getting back, you know that that ten thousand dollar questions that you know looking for your leaders. Learn to ask that question of yourself. Learn to ask that question of everyone you sponsor, or if you have people who aren't in the business. You know, you have some good family members. Just you know, if you feel comfortable with it, just say, hey, I'm trying to look for the best people for my business. Like, you know, I'm looking for and give them your qualities. We're looking for warm, open, easy to talk to, reliable. Give them and then just say, you know, Joe, if, if you were to bet $10,000 of your own money on any person that fits that criteria that might do, you know, you know, would do great in this business that they got involved, who would that be? Ask that question as much as you can. You need three, four or five of those kinds of people in your business when the timing is right for them to build anything that you want. Okay, so it gets back to the topic today is asking the right questions. How do you find hard workers? It's very simple. What do you think? How do you find the hardest workers that you know and that people know? What do you think? Anybody? How do you find them? Anybody? Yeah, you ask. Like, Who's the hardest? You've been on the earth for 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. Who are the who are the three hardest workers that you ever met? Oh, that would be Adriana. I mean, she just like does this and that and this and that. Well, tell me a little bit more about Adriana. Like what 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 makes her do that? She's just inner motivated. Whatever she does, she wants to do well. She's great at connecting with people. But tell me more about Adriana. OK. Now I'm learning about Adriana, super hard worker. Then I find out that she's like, when I asked the $10,000 question, she said, oh, that would be Adriana too. Okay. So now I got Adriana, who's the $10,000 question person. 
who's the heart one of the hardest workers that person ever met do i want to meet adriana if i don't already know her absolutely i want to get to know adriana because if i can connect with her and then appropriately stay in touch with her because chances are like right now if i was if, if i was in network marketing but i wasn't here today and i heard about adriana and i tried to get to know her well she's nice she would connect with me i know that but do you think i could sponsor if i was in another company now do you think i could sponsor adriana into my company right now just because she's like one of the, uh, the perfect person for network marketing. Anybody, do you think I could do that? Yeah, yes or no? What do you think? Yes, you could possibly sponsor her, but she might not be ready to get started. Yeah, well, I may, maybe if I was to put my sales hat on and all that, but even then it, it's like when you when you get someone like Adriana who's committed to her to her company, She's committed to the system that the company works with. She's doing all these things in her company. It doesn't matter what I would say to her. She would politely decline. Okay. She, she would say, hey, thanks, but no thanks. You know, you know, when people ask me to get involved in another company, I, you know, I'm I'm nice to them. I I listen to most of them <laughs> if they don't take too much of my time, you know, and I and I've got introduced to them. I'll listen to them, but I I, I always say, well, thank you for thinking of me. That makes me feel really good that you think I could do well, but I'm already involved in a company. I'm happy with what I'm doing, but thank you. But here's the point I'm trying to make. And thank you, Sue, for that. Here's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. Most of the really top-notch people, if you're asking the right questions, you're getting in touch with them. They're not going to be ready to jump into your business right now. Okay. However, here's the number one guarantee for your success. If you stay in touch with those people appropriately, you will ultimately not in the next three months or six months or a year, but over a period of two, three, four, five years, you, if you stay in touch with them appropriately, you will sponsor about 50% of them. And remember, you don't have to sponsor 50% of them, okay? You only need, in most companies, you need three, four, or five people who are coachable and treat it like a business to go anywhere you want. You know, with, with the technology and the internet and the community and the app and all those things, you know, we talk about five in the book, you know, find five and help them find five, 25, 125. I'm going to put a chapter. There's going to be a chapter in the book about five versus 10 now, because back when we, when the book was written, you know, everything was a big labor. You know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to introduce someone, it was labor intensive. If you wanted to in introduce someone to the business, you had to grab the book and you had to put it in an envelope and, you know, seal it and address it and stamp it and take it to the take it to the post office and and wait in line and pay for priority mail and i mean it was it was you know it was a lot of work it was worth it if you it was worth it cuz i built a great business doing that way but but today with the app you know in 15 seconds you send out a link takes them shows them the card has the first five chapters i mean you can do that in 15 seconds at so 10 times faster for a fraction of the cost so now, you know, and everything evolves, right? We evolve as people, right? Your children evolve. I mean, everything evolves. The, the principles stay intact. The order of the introduction, you know, the own your life system stays intact. Everything that I talk about here, asking the right questions, that's all principles. That's like gravity, you know? Like I could drop this pencil a million times. It's never going to go up. It's always going to go down because that's called physics, all right? So you have to maintain the, the principles. But if you can do things a lot faster for the people that you are sponsoring personally, and then remember, you select the right people, you get them started efficiently and effectively, and you work down group. You got to remember everybody down here, you know, if you're working down group, you know, one of the most important things you can do is be working at the bottom of your group. Most people in network marketing, they only want to hang out with their friend, you know, their best friend, because they're comfortable with them. What they should be doing they should, you should always be working as deep in your group as possible because this person pays this person who pays this person who pays this person who pays you. But if you're always working with the comfortable person right here, what about these people down here? They, they might be the best people in the world, but in the beginning, they're new. They need your support. So you're always better working down here. And if they're super sharp, if they're sharp people, if you selected them right in the first place, they go, wow. That's pretty cool. That's like what I read in napkin presentation number nine. 
motivation and attitude, working at the bottom of the groove. And by the way, when you're talking to your people, okay, the people you sponsor personally and the people that are down group from you, you always want to be referring to the book as much as possible. Like if they ask you a question and it has something to do with like, you know, digging down to bedrock or, you know, uh, selling, you know, if it's something to do with like digging down, how do I build my foundation? Refer them to napkin presentation number four. Remember, it's a sponsor teach business, but you don't have to teach, especially if you're new. You might have read chapter, you know, you know, napkin presentation number one through 10. You might understand them, you know, here and to a certain degree here, but you might not know enough to be able to like, you know, off the top of your head. You don't have to. That's why we put everything in readable version and audible version and in video version. Just refer your people to, remember, sponsor teach, but you don't have to do the teaching. And to the degree that you send over like an FAQ that answers their question, or you refer them to a certain chapter of the book, to that degree, okay? If, especially when you're doing it with the right kinds of people, because if you're doing that all the time, what are these people going to do? The smart ones are gonna do the same thing. So now you have an organization of everybody who is, you know, because of internet technology, right? At the, the community and the app, everybody's moving 10 times as fast at a fraction of the cost. Can you see why we, you know, Don always says, and I always say it too, you're going to see a revolution in the network marketing industry in the next two to five years. No doubt about it, because you're going to have people building businesses like Don Fela that took Don 25 years. You're going to be see people doing it in two to five years. You'll probably be even, even see it in, in one to three, three years, especially now with artificial intelligence and the different things that you can do that. A lot of people have, you know, um, you know, real um, um, uh, hardcore philosophies on AI. And, you know, I don't want to go there. Some people don't like it. Some people love it. Some people are in between. But it's a reality. And it's going to be, it's good. All the tools in network marketing are going to be a lot of AI tools going forward. And if you use them appropriately and in the right way, they can in increase your business phenomenally. It's just amazing. We'll be doing things. We'll be teaching on that. For those of you who want to plug in, we'll be doing seminars and stuff about different tools down the road that you can combine with the system to be able to even accelerate your growth. But there's no question we're going to be seeing people build businesses like that were no one ever even dreamed of and network marketing uh, because of the internet, the technology, the community the app, and, and then combined with artificial intelligence down the road. Um, it's gonna be an amazing thing. And you know, this industry is a two, about a $200 billion a year industry right now. As beautiful as network marketing is when you understand it, okay? Cause it's horrible when you don't understand it, you know? But it's a beautiful business if you understand it because it's all about people helping people, helping people, all succeed. I mean, it's like one big, you know, love affair with helping people succeed and connecting with the right kinds of people. It's an awesome business. It's just been done the wrong way for so long by so many people that it has, it has really, um, I won't say destroyed the industry, but it's kept it from getting to where it should be. I mean, this industry, in my opinion, Okay, shouldn't be a 200 billion, if I said million earlier, I meant billion, a $200 billion a year industry. It should be a two, $2 trillion a year business. It should be 20 times. Now you think about it, let's, 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 let's kind of prove that, all right? Everybody's looking for the 5% of the salespeople, right? Because they think network marketing is sales. So they're tripping over themselves, trying to find them because they think it's going to make them rich. I said, say that over and over again. Very repetitive business, by the way. So kind of get used to that because there's only so many things you can teach that work. You know, you say it over and over again. But but now if you if you have a system that anybody can do, if you're the shyest person in the world and you can just have someone read the card, okay, you're starting off on the right track, right? You're looking for people who want a better life. They they read this card, it takes them 30 seconds, they go, Wow, I don't have much time, I don't have much money, and I don't have to sell to be able to do it, maybe I'll take a look at that. Now you're tapping into the 95%, right? Because they wanna own their life too, just like salespeople do. It's just that they don't, they never found something, you need me, okay. They never found something that they thought that they could do. But now they read the card and they go, 
maybe, maybe I could do that. Do you see how you're opening up your horizons here? We're going from the 5% to the 95%. Or actually, it's actually like, you know, if you do the system right, you have practically 100% of the people that you can introduce people to because 95% want a better life. And the 5% who are already have a great life, they're you know, at the top, they have money, time, whatever, okay? They want to live forever. So they want to utilize your products and services to make their life better. So you practically, with our system, because of the order that it's in, do this, do that, right? Change the mindset. Do they want a better life? Change their mindset. Make sure they understand what this business is because they don't know what it is. Now you show them the products on the back end and you tap into that 95%. What's the difference between 5% and 95 or 100%? It's 20 times as large of a market. Now, people argue with me sometimes. Yeah, but will those people actually do? Well, not all of them are going to do the business, but if they want to, right? If they want it bad enough, if they want a better life, anybody can do this, do that, and send you know, the comp your company website to your friend. If they don't want it bad enough in the first place, they're not going to do it, but that's okay. You're not looking for them anyway. But my point is that they can do it if they want. If they, if those 95% had to sell like what everybody else teaches in network marketing, they have no shot. They would never do it. And even if they tried to do it, they would get a bad taste in their mouth, okay? Because those 95% can only take two or three or four rejections and they are gone. And then what do they do? They run around telling everybody that network marketing does not work, okay? And network marketing works fine. It works great if you do network marketing. Okay. But most people, the vast majority, they're in network marketing companies, but they're not doing network marketing. They're doing sales. Okay. They mix like oil and water. And it's this revolving cycle of like addition, subtraction, addition, subtraction. But the, but the proof how awesome network marketing is, is that even though most people were doing it wrong, okay, it's still growing faster than traditional franchises. It's still growing faster than startup businesses. It's like, so what does that mean? That means that on some level, even the ones that are doing it wrong, they get the beauty of it. You know, they hear about the leverage potential, you know, you help five people who help five people and you can build this business, these wonderful products, and, and you can earn a lot of income and be able to own your life. The problem is they're just not taught how to do it the right way. Here comes Don Fela, you know, four and a half decades ago, all right? Sold 11 million books and everything, but because most of these companies, even the ones that use the books, they go right back to selling again, right? It's just a, a ring around the rosy of, of what, what, what's still happening in the industry. All right. So now, though, you know, with the platform that's coming up, the app, you know, people teaching this stuff on a regular basis, not only teaching the system, because it's not just the system, you know, just because you do this, you do that, and you send it to the company website. You remember, it's an 80, 20, right? There's only about 10 or let's say 20. Okay. Let's say 20 people out of 100 that can do network marketing. Let's use that 80 20 rule. I think it's 10 out of 100, but let's just say it's 20, okay? All right. If, if you're not going to those 10 or 20 people, it doesn't matter what system that you use. They're still not going to do it because they just, they're, that's what those pe people do. They just don't want to do it or they don't feel they can do it or whatever, whatever the reason is. So you have to have the right system and you have to go to the right people, okay? And then you have to get those people started efficiently and effectively because if you don't get them started quickly they tend to become impatient right right and you want to get some points on the board there real quick and then as soon as it starts growing all right as soon as it starts growing you want to do the same thing with this people you want to teach, you want to help this person help this person get their person and you want to help this person help this person help it. you it's ring around the rosy it's using the system picking the right people getting them started efficiently and effectively working down group once you have a group and you just keep on repeating that process over and over. Everybody who's coming in to the right kinds of people, you cannot fail. It is impossible to not go to the top of your company 
if you do that and you stay consistent. It's impossible. I'm not saying you're going to make 500,000 a month now, okay? Because it's one thing making 5, 10 or 20,000 a month, okay? It's my opinion that anybody on this webinar right now can make 10 or 20,000 dollars a month. That's my educated opinion. And but to make 50,000 a month, it's a little bit different. It's you got to have it's the same things, you got to do the same things that I just have been talking about, okay? All right, but you have to have a little bit bigger vision. We'll do a webinar on that sometime down the road. Um, but if you want to do it, if that's what your goal is, you know, to earn, you know, I, most people, you know, who have a job, they have income from a job and they use our system and they stay consistent. You know, you get five people and you go three or four levels deep in most companies, you're making somewhere between seven and $10,000 a month. You know, if you have a current income coming in and an additional seven to $10,000 a month coming in over here, do you realize you're making, you're, you, you're in a better, you're doing better in your life than most millionaires are. If you have, if you have that going on, you know, if you, if you had, if you were living in the home of your choice and you didn't have a mortgage payment, okay. And you were driving the car of your choice and you didn't have a car payment. And your credit bills were paid, credit cards were paid off. You didn't have any debt. All you had to pay was your taxes. And you were making an extra seven to $10,000 a month, along with your regular income from your job. You would be living better than most millionaires on this earth. So, you know, we talk about these big, these big numbers and these huge organizations, and that's great. And there's people doing that. Don's a great example. Okay. I, I build a business like that. Okay. Uh, I know, you know, there's a handful of people that have built a business like that, more than a handful, okay? But um, but can you do it on purpose? You know, and the answer is yes. Like anybody here can do that. Slam dunk guaranteed. Follow the system, don't quit. Plug into this stuff. Teach your people down line what we're teaching. If they're not on the webinar, send them to the recordings. Keep on asking the right questions. And you will find eventually you, and then stay in touch with the ones. This is huge. This is your number one guarantee. They're not, most of them aren't going to get into your business in the beginning because that's just the way it is. They're probably doing something else, but they appreciate so much that you didn't try to talk them into something that you show, you know, you showed them a car that went, that they went, or you had a little conversation. Some people like to have the conversation. Maybe you are a sales type. Here's the conversation. Okay. Don, you know, you can use the, have you ever thought what it'd be like to own your life? I like to do, I, typically I just let people read the card because I really don't like to talk that much. You, that might surprise you, you know, since we're, I'm talking a lot here, but once this webinar is done, you know, my wife has to beg me to talk to her throughout the day. I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but, but like, I, I like that the conversation that I like to have is, you know, um, they say pow. How, if time, money, and health wasn't a problem for you, in other words, you had plenty of all three of those things, what would your life look like compared to what it looks like now? And then let them talk. Some people don't say anything. They never even thought about it. Okay. Some people talk a little bit and they go, well, that's a good question. Geez. Uh, and because they're so busy in their life. All right. They are so, they, they just have never had time to thought about it. Most people what did Ralph Waldo Emerson used to say? Most people go to the grave, you know, with their dreams inside them. That's that's the truth. You know, no one ever. And think of the favor that you're doing for people by introducing them to network marketing or asking that question. OK, and then if you ask that question to some people, they'll talk for 15 or 20 minutes. I've had people talk for 30 minutes and your goal is not to talk. Talking is your worst enemy. Your goal is to what? What's this, what's this webinar about today? What's the, the number one thing? It's about a lot of things, but questions. Your goal is to ask the right questions because if you ask enough of the right questions to enough of the right people, you're going to get enough of the right answers. So you selected the right people. Pal is a great example of that. He's been around now since I can, you know, I don't know how long, but he shows up all the time. Okay, Chris shows up all the time. Sue shows up all the time. She's relatively new, but she shows up all the time. Okay. Get the people 
Well, select the right people. They show up and they learn. Some people learn real quick. Some people learn a little slower. All right. But once they get it, they're not going anywhere. And that's why Don has a 30% retention. And the average network marketer has like a less than a 3% retention. Think about that. That is unbelievable. And the only way you're going to make, earn an income in network marketing, like to be able to own your life, income that keeps on coming in, whether you decide to get up in the morning or not and go to work, is to, is to, is to build the business the right way so that the people that you sponsor and who they sponsor, who they, they stick around, because if they don't stick around and, and, and purchase products and services, there's no money. So sales is, yes, it, it is part of network marketing, but it's the result. The huge sales and huge re, re, uh, results, huge uh, residual, it's a result of doing things right in the first place. And then people go, oh, then they buy their products because think about the book. What's, uh, what's napkin presentation number three? Talk about it. Anybody raise their hand? What's napkin presentation number three? It's like the four things you have to do, right? Isn't that number three? All right, four things you have to do. Who wants the copy of the book for chapters for free? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> okay, when, you, when, when, the, when smart people, when the right people go through the first four napkin presentations, they read the introduction, and then they go through the first four napkin presentations. They know how to drive. So in the, in the third napkin presentation, it talks about the four things you have to do. You have to get in and get started. You have to buy some product. All right. You have to get into first gear and then you have to shift in the second. OK, it takes you through that. When smart people see that now, all of a sudden they're thinking, oh, it, it's not about my friend trying to get me to buy products so that they can make money from me. The reason is that, that, that we buy product and it explains it in there is because that's what you have to do. Like no one gets paid unless products and services are moving. Isn't that interesting? Like, so it's part of the program. And why do you purchase products and services? You purchase them because they're going to help you in your life. I mean, if they're lousy products and services, you shouldn't buy them. That's why it's very important to be in a company that has great products and services. Because just if, you, if you're just using our system, but you're in a company that has lousy products, it's not going to work. You got to have great products and services too. That's part of it. All right. but the smart people, they get the napkin presentation number three and they go, well, I have to use them because that's part of the volume. Okay. I have to use them because I get to taste them. I get to experience what they do. Or if it's a service, I get to use the service and see if I, I really want to tell other people about this. You know, you have to experience the products, but if you do that first without understanding napkin presentation number three, and one, two, and four. What if it's a product that doesn't taste all that good? Or what if it's a product that someone takes and you might've had an experience, but they didn't have an experience. Now they didn't have an experience. Does that mean they can't build a network marketing business? It's not about that. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about building a business that allows you to own your life. Like in our company, we have, I don't know, 150 products or something like that. It's a nutritional product, nutritional company, okay? Like if someone uses a product that they don't like the taste of or whatever, they don't like the look of, you know, people are, you know, they make people, everybody's different, right? Well, they don't just quit when I sponsor them because I brought them in the right way, right? And Don brought them in the right way. We brought them in because they wanted a better life. So let's just say they bring, utilize a product. They're not crazy about it for some reason. They don't just quit. Like if you brought them in on the product without knowing the rest of the story, they don't understand network marketing. Now they try that product. They go, yuck, I'm not telling anybody about that. And they're gone. They came in to own their life. So now all they do is they don't use that product anymore. And they find another one or two or three products that they fall in love with. They can't live without. And they continue building their business so that they can build a business that allows them to own their life, have time, money, and health. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here as far as the order of bringing them in? why it's so important. If, if, you're, if you're leading with the products and services, you, you might be able to build a large business, but you probably won't. 
because it'll take you too long, 20, 30 years. And most people get scared off after the second boo. <laughs> okay, so you're probably not gonna be around. So you use the order of the system, the people that come in, or even the people that don't come in, you put a stone in their shoe, you impress them because you brought them in the right way. All right, now the stone is in their shoe. What happens when a stone gets in your shoe? All right. It's well, hurt. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're anything like me, you try to like, cause, cause I'm late. I'm lazy. Right. I don't want to sit down and take my shoe off and get the stone out. So I just keep on walking and I pray that the snow, the, that the stone works its way out of the shoe, but does it ever work its way out of the shoe? Like I can't recall it ever. Like it sticks around in there until it bothers you so much. You're forced to sit down, take your shoe off, take the stone out. Why do I use that analogy? That's what you do when you ask the right questions, you get the right people, but the timing's not right. You put the stone in their shoe. And as time goes by, their they start a new business. Their business goes out of business. They get married, they get divorced, they have kids, they have grandkids. Uh, before the husband was making a great salary. So they didn't really think about needing too much money. They had it made. He lost his job. They lost half their income, right? Do you see how situations change? Do situations change in your life? Are you the same person as you were three, four, five, 10 years ago? Or are you different? All right. It, 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 it amazes me to this day that people don't stay in touch with like, like me. <laughs> like, and I'm not saying that to brag or anything. I'm just saying like, there's so many people they know, they've known, you know, what I've achieved in, in the industry. Same thing with Don, you know, you know, you know, some of the people above Don like quit. Who is the next? Yes. As Don they is they don't even know. Think about it. Would you quit if Don was in your downline? But they don't even, they don't even know any better. They don't understand network marketing. They quit. Do you realize how many people walked away from thousands of dollars a month because they just quit? You know, they didn't hear, hear Don fail. He was six levels down. They they just quit because they were introduced the wrong way and it didn't work out for them and they quit. All right. I, I know one guy who sponsored someone. See, that's why you have to understand network marketing. Like, like for example, the money's not in the first two or three levels. That's pin money. You know, you could you can take all that money and give it to your the charity of your choice. The first two or three levels, I mean, it's money. And in the beginning, when you need money, it's, you know, it's it's important. I'm not saying that. I'm not downgrading it. But the real money in network marketing is down here. It's down here. Okay. Where's my card? I lose my stuff. Well, you know it is. I lost my card. But anyway. Yes. It's way oh, down. Okay. Down. It's in depth. All right. Okay. So, you know. <clears throat> here. One of, one of my friends, there we go, thank you. One of my friends sponsored uh, one of my other friends, really incredible network marketer. He sponsored him and he put him under another person. Like he put him on his second level, okay? Now, probably you heard a lot of this, right? In your companies, they stack people or you give people away. There's good reasons sometimes in rare instances to give people away. If you sponsor someone and maybe you can't help them because you're so busy right now, but you know they're sharp and there's a group over here that's really good group working and maybe you want to help them out and this person's sharp. So you say, hey, I got someone really sharp. I don't have time to work with them right now. And you put them under some money. There are, there are reasons to do that. But if you do that regularly, you are cutting your throat in network marketing. Let me give you an example. My friend, put my other friend under on his second level. And it, the pay plan there was, I think it was a seven, it was a seven pay plan, like a seven level, unilevel pay plan. Okay. And remember all the money is down, is down here. It's not, it's not up here. I mean, do, do the math. 525, 125, 625, uh, 3125, 15, 625. Okay. Do the math. Go down seven levels when we get done with the webinar here and go out to the seventh level. I think there's like 97,000 people on that level or something like this. In this particular company, it was even worse than that, better than that. Um, my, my, friend, uh, my friend who was put in the second level built this huge organization. 
which cut the guy that sponsored him, it cut him off of his entire seventh level. Okay. All right. So, so what am I saying here? He gave this person away and it ended up costing him one and a half million dollars a year for 10 years. This guy that sponsored him, he still did well. The guy that sponsored him still was the top distributor in the company. Had he not given him away though, had he put him on the first level, he would have had his entire seventh level, right? And he would have made an extra million and a half. So that, that cost him over 10 years, $15 million. Why? Because he didn't understand network marketing. He didn't understand, as sophisticated as this guy was, he didn't understand the plan. Because he knew that the person that he sponsored was great because he was a known entity in the network marketing business. He had built two other huge businesses and that the second company went out of business and he joined this company. You know, so is it important to understand network marketing? That's just one instance. All right. Very important. Just like you don't want the heart surgeon operating on your heart if you never went to heart surgery school. Just like you don't want the engineer building the bridge that your family crosses every day, all right? And there's a certain order to everything. You jump in the shower, you don't take your clothes, you don't go in with your clothes on, you take your clothes off first and then you get into the shower. It sounds silly, but these things are really, really important. And they're super simple too. They're very, very simple, but they're very, very sophisticated. Just like working in depth. That's very, very simple to do. Working in depth, is just, it's a strategy and a philosophy, okay, that happens to work every single time. Why? Because if you have a big, a fairly big downline, you have three, four, five, six, seven levels, and you're working down here. You know, I don't know about you guys, but like when you're, when you're dealing, like with me, I'm talking to friends and people that I know, know me since I was a kid, and they know all the goofy things I did too. You know, they're always ribbing you, get out of here. You know, they're your friends. They know you intimately. But when you're down here, working on your 5th, 10th, 20th, 30th levels, those people were like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, Sue's coming down and working with me. Oh my, I mean, Sue's in town. Sue's doing a webinar for my group. I mean, you know, your friends, they treat you like, a lot of times they treat you like crud, you know, not not really, but you know what I mean. They're, they know you real good. They can get away with it, okay? But the people down here, they don't really know you. They just know you're successful in the industry. You know what you're doing. And they are so appreciative. Like when you come down and you work with them, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, uh, Rosa's down here. Abdul came down and worked with me. You know, they treat you like you're a king or a queen. And that's fantastic because they hang on your every word. Okay. That's why, that's like what, like what I'm teaching right here. If I wasn't teaching you the right thing, you know, I would be doing you a tremendous disservice because I'm probably coming, because I've been doing this for so long, I'm probably coming across like I know what I'm talking about, right? But do you know, a lot of these people and these other companies, these top distributors, they come across like they know what they're talking about too. And guess what? They don't. They're teaching sales in a network marketing business. And yes, some of them have made some money because again, if you throw enough mud against the wall, you know, some's going to stick. One of my buddies sponsored 1,600 people. Guess who makes them all the money? About six or seven of them make them 99% of all his money. Okay. Amway, same thing. Recruited, advertised, 500 people, five of them build Amway. Why go, why go through 500 when you can ask the right question, sponsor 20 or 30 to find your five? Isn't that the smarter way to do it? Plus, it gives our industry, it, it builds our industry up because then people go, you know what? I can do this. I want to own my life too. I can learn how to ask some questions and I can ask my upline for some help as we're building it up. I can do that. So we turn the whole industry upside down from Jeff, these people that only think it sales. Okay. Yeah, Adriana. Jeff, I, I just uh, remind myself that uh, that what you said uh, is very similar to a regular job because there we have a, uh, the same uh, scheme, yes, because people are on the top just uh, earning the, 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 the most uh, money of the company. They are managers, directors, and so on. 
and right. people just duplicate in in network marketing the wrong way of doing the business they are duplicating the same uh, way of regular job this is not the same yes it's different it's like you know walk, walking your dog is different than walking your cat it's different you know network marketing is network marketing it's not network selling think of the terms i mean words mean things right if you if you don't think words mean things, go around calling people, you know, ugly names, you know, you know, go, go around punching. If you don't think actions mean things, go around punching people in the nose. Just walk up. Hey, how you doing? Boom. What's going to happen? You're going to find someone who's going to kick your butt. You know, there are consequences to what you do. If you if you build a network marketing based on traditional sales. OK. And it's one thing if you want to make a couple hundred, three hundred dollars a month. If that's the case and all you want to do is retail and you know you you, you love a product or two and you, hey that's fine there's nothing wrong with that it's just you're never going to build a business that allows you to own your life. And I would imagine that most of you want to do that. I mean if you want to make an extra 500 bucks or a thousand a month if you go out there and sell and you're a good salesman and stuff you can probably do that in most network marketing companies but my take on that is it's way too difficult to do that in network marketing. I mean, it's it's way easier to build it the right way by using the system and then asking questions and not trying to persuade and convince. And, you know, it's so much easier to do it right than to do it wrong. You might as well build a business that owns your life. That's my take on it. All right. And the only reason most people would argue with that is because they don't understand. Understanding is the number one word in network marketing. So that's that, pretty much it. Yeah, Jeff, maybe we will have five minutes or 10 minutes for people who would like to ask you something. Maybe there are some of yeah. them. Sure, sure. You, you are free to, to just ask, okay? So unmute yourself or, or write something in the chat. Maybe you have some comments regarding that with what uh, Jeff said. Nobody is uh, Yes. <laughs> okay. Please. Uh, Joe, I, I have a question. Uh, could you please give us some examples of uh, maybe probably three questions that we should ask as examples so we can figure out and try to make more questions by our own. Would you do yeah. that for me, please? Yeah, I can send you. I mean, I would, I, on in the community, we're going to have every question imaginable. We're going to have a section in the community that, for example, you know how we talk about, like, you know, Don talks about if it's an 18 to 22 year old and, you know, what they want, 70% you know, of them, what they want more than anything else, if it's a male as a brand new car or truck to drive around or like a, a stay-at-home mom, you know, uh, let me, here's an example for you, Moses, and there's a lot of questions like this that are going to be in the community, and if you contact me at funeveryday.com, I'll send you, a, a, I'll send you the homework assignment that I send out to people that has a lot of those questions, but just let me give you one specific example. I could give you a hundred of them, but this is an easy one. Let's, let's just, let's just say you have a, you, um, you have someone who's a who's a, a wannabe stay-at-home mom. I use this example a lot because it, it works, all right? A wannabe stay-at-home mom. And she doesn't like sales, and, but she's but she is really she's she's a real she's warm, open, easy to talk to. She's, you know, she has a lot of credibility and influence with her peers. You know, she's she's a very industrious person. She gets the job done. She connects with people well. She's on a bunch of committees. You know, she has a, a really solid, you know, family life. Um, you know, uh, she's reliable. You know, she checks off all the boxes here. But maybe she has two sons, okay, that are be going, going, going to be going to college in the next, uh, you know, two years or so. And she wants to be able to help them financially so that they're not strapped with debt, okay? And that is, like, super important to her, okay? Now, you notice, like, this is why it's a relationship business. If you know someone like that, or you sponsored someone and they know someone like that, what you want to do 
is that you want to create, you know, you want to approach them in a way. Okay. And, and by the way, maybe she can't work weekends either because she likes to do camping, you know, with her family on the weekend. Okay. So if you know someone like that, you want to try to create an approach so that they literally like when when you sit when you when you or the person you sponsor ask this question to their friends that it's almost impossible for them to say no to it okay a lot of you probably think that that can how, how do you, well that's why it's a relationship business that's why i send people a homework assignment and ask them to fill it out so that i can get to know not only them but the people that they know because if they're super sharp people and i can design if i can really understand what makes that person tick not only here, but here, then I can craft a message that they all, it's almost impossible to say no to. I mean, in this particular case, Moses, all right, it would be, you know, let's call her Mary. Mary, if you could see a way to generate an extra, and, and maybe she, ne she needs 5,000 a month to be able to help her kids. That's what she needs, okay? So Mary, if you could see a way to generate $5,000 a month in a part-time venture, working out of the home, picking your own hours, not working weekends if you didn't want to, because I know you like to do camping and things like that. And it was fun and family oriented. And you didn't have to persuade or convince people at all to do this. And I would help you do it. All right. Would you be open to checking out some brief information that explains what I'm talking about here? Now, how is Mary, who you have a relationship with, I, did I check all the boxes right there? You don't have to work weekends, right? Part-time venture, work from your home or anywhere. I should have thrown that in there anywhere you wanted to because you don't have to work from your home, network marketing, you work anywhere, right? And and you can and, and, and generate 5,000. I know she needs 5,000. I checked off all those boxes, right? If she, it's, it's almost impossible. Like, I don't like no's. I don't know about you. I don't like no's. Sometimes you're going to get no's. But to the degree that you can ask the right question to that right person, to that degree, you won't get very many no's. All right. So she says, sure. Like, well, what is it? Now, here's where you don't want to talk. You say, well, hey, would you rather listen to some information that would explain or would you rather read about it or both? Uh, I, how about both? So you send a link from the community, from the app over that has the card, write a little note, read this, go through the first five chapters, and then you know, let me, you know, get, get back to me with your thoughts. And then if she doesn't get back to you, you follow up in a couple of days and say, hey, I know you're busy. You know, I'm just checking in to see, because I know once you go through the information, you're going to have some great questions and I want to take care of them while they're fresh in your mind. Okay. When okay. you get good at that, you can do that for any type of person. You, you, if you, you know, I, I, if it was someone who was uh, wealthy, but was working 80 hours a week and never saw his wife, and now his wife wants a divorce because he's working all the time, right? And he can't not work because he owns car dealerships. And if he's not there, the car, he, he's afraid everything's going to fall apart. He's in a dilemma, right? Does he want to lose his wife and his family? <laughs> or does he want to keep his car dealerships more? You know what I mean? Like, so... And, and maybe he's making millions of dollars. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Remember, time, money, and health. It's a combination. Owning your life isn't just about money. It's about all three. Most people don't know one person who has all three. So in a ca case like that, if I had a relationship with that guy, and I said to him, hey, Joe, if I could show you how to work a third the hours and make just as much money if you're making, maybe even twice as much money as you're making, would you be open to checking out some brief information? Now, think about it. I'm telling him he can make just as much, if not more, work in a third of the hours, right? And if I was really close with him, if he was one, you know, really close, I might even throw, you know, you got to know what you can ask and get away with, okay? If I didn't know him real well, I wouldn't say this next part. But if I knew him real well, I'd say, hey, and maybe it would even save your marriage, Joe. Okay, you got to know what you can ask, okay? I mean, if you don't know him that well, you throw that in there, that might that might make him mad at you, right? Okay, so, but anyway, you what you want to do, Moses, is you want to, you know, that's why select the right people, get to know them, get to know their friends, formulate the right questions. Now, 
you know, most of the time we know an 18 to 20 year old want, a male wants a, a, a nice car to drive. We know that. So that's kind of a safe question. If you don't know them real well, if you're talking to an 18 to 22 year old, you can say, hey, if I could show you how to be driving a brand new car in the next three to four months in a presentation that took about a minute, would you be open to checking it out? That'll work most of the time. It's not as good as if I knew him real well, you know, like Mary or my wealthy friend example, but it's pretty close. Okay. Um, we know that people in retirement right now, right, Moses, uh, we, we know because of inflation and because of the retirement savings getting, getting eroded by bad investments and we know a lot of those people aren't making as much money in retirement as they as they thought they were going to be making. We know that, okay? So, you know, probably 90% of people in retirement, you could ask a question like, you know, hey, Fred, you know, if you could see a way to be to generate an extra two, three thousand bucks a month in the next six months or so without having to, you know, persuade or convince or anything like that. And it was something fun. All right. And I and I could help you doing it. Would you be open to checking out some? You know, and, and maybe they want to see their grandkids who live halfway across the world, but they can't see them because they don't have enough money to jump on a plane anytime that they want. That's part of owning your life, right? Time, money, and health to do what you want. So I could throw that in there. If I knew that person, this is why it's so important. Relationships are so important because when you know them, you can throw this stuff in there. All right. So I go, hey, if you could generate an extra two, three thousand bucks a month to supplement your retirement and it'll allow you to see your grandkids whenever you want or have them come and see you, you know, and we could do it in three, four, five, six months together, working together. Would you be open to checking out some brief information? What's he going to say? Like, and if he says, no, you're not talking to the right person. And you only need three, four, five of those kinds of people. Can you see when you dial all this stuff in, how you can write your ticket in network market? Okay. Good yeah. question. Though. Just contact me at funeveryday.com. I'll send you other questions. Jeff, then the next question from Rosa, Rosa, yes, um, I ask, it, it shows really, it shows how uh, the teaching of network marketing looks like in today's world. Uh, she she write, wrote something like that. Um, I ask a friend if she wants to come to a Zoom meeting to understand how to earn by posting on social media. And my friend who is very active to post on social media, but she was looking for a job after marketing a university program and my friend answered to me i'm not interested in network marketing question my question was wrong or my friend was a wrong person um, if they you know it always goes back to your relationship with them and and are they the right people in the first place i mean always go back to are they warm open easy to talk to are they reliable are they have credibility and influence with their peers? Do they have good communication and people skills? They don't have to be salespeople, okay? Just being able to connect with people. You have a cup of coffee with them and you walk away an hour later and you go, wow, that was so nice. That's what I mean by good communication and people skills. Just good, solid people. They ask questions, they listen, you like to be around them. And people who are, who are uh, industrious. So if that person is like that and you know what they want, OK, or if you can find out what they want, then I would go back to, to that person and I would ask them a question like I just explained to you. OK, like Mary or the wealthy person question, you know, you got to ask the right question, like because you ask her, she wants to come to a Zoom meeting to understand how to earn by posting on, on, on social media. I mean, in her mind, that might be selling. She doesn't want to bug people. You know, there's a lot of people there. Um, uh, I'm not answer. I'm not interested in network marketing. That's because she doesn't like network marketing. If she understood network marketing, she would probably like it. Because who wouldn't want to be able to have a business that allows you to own your life in two to five years, maybe even one to three, all right, without having to sell or persuade or convince? She just doesn't understand that. Okay, so you know. You got to go back to, you know, the, they got to be the right people in the first place. And then you got to ask the right question. I hope that answers your question. 
Okay, thank you. There is also a hand raised. I don't know who is there. Yes, it's, it's me. I'm sorry. Hi. I just want to say something that because not everybody wants to be in the internet and selling because many people compare with, for example, Herbalife and they say it's a pyramid. And sometimes it's better to try yourself the products, show what they do and take them that way and then easy going the other way because everybody's not into internet and when they don't know what the products are because nowadays everybody's selling on the internet everybody wants to sell everybody wants to do with business one has to find out this person you have to know this person look what they're looking for and find out what they need one needs to lose weight one has to maybe because of, um, oh, the Spanish is coming out, uh, because of sickness, you have to find out what they want. Because sometimes when you show them the product and then you tell them about the internet, no, 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 I'm not interested. So you have to watch and see what that person wants. Well, first of all, a couple things, and that's, I understand what you're saying, but a couple things. First of all, we never teach to post and do social media like posting products and and mm. try it on the internet we, mm -hmm. we can, a, there's going to be a chapter in the book about how to do that properly there is a right way to do things and there's a wrong way to do things so yeah number one that'll really help you okay because it'll clarify what we say um do i do I, how do i pronounce your name is it lenovo i know my name is cecilia oh cecilia okay okay cecilia do i have permission to put you on the spot for a second <laughs> This, this yeah, is, yeah, this, go ahead. Okay, this is just to make this is just to make a point. Okay, yeah, right. Um, uh, how how much do you know about our system? Like, could you could you explain to me in less than thirty seconds exactly what our system is, the Own Your Life system? Do you mean the system of the internet or the system of the products? No, the Own Your Life. What Don Fela teaches, you know, how to build the the Own Your Life system in order to build your network marketing business. Well, when it comes to internet, I'm not the 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 good person. I'm not very okay, good with yeah, this. Internet. Has nothing to do with the internet, though. Well, here's here here's the system. Let me go through it for you real quick. Okay, uh -huh. we we talk to people about what they want. Okay, so, well, let me take a step back. You know, our system is so simple. You can teach people in less than ten minutes how to start sponsoring and building a business, like from day one. Okay, uh -huh. and because all we do, Cecilia, is we talk to people about what they want, or if you're too shy. We let them read a card to see if they want something. Okay. Step mm -hmm. one. If they want something, we have them go through the first five uh, the, uh, chapters of the book. Okay. So that they understand network marketing. We call that now they know how to drive. Okay. All right. And then, all right. Once they know how to drive, you need a vehicle to drive, right? There's no point in learning how to drive if you don't have a vehicle. All right. Yeah. And the, so that's, that's the second step. Learn how to drive. So then you send them like a website or the appropriate, you know, if it's someone that wanted to lose weight or something like that, you know, cause you know them, it's a relationship business. You should only be dealing with people that you have a relationship with. All right. In the first place. So you might know they want to, so then you send them a particular, whatever's appropriate from your company. Okay. So here's my, here's my point. All right. Um, if you, when you do it that way, like, let's just say that was you. Let's just say I was I was prospecting you. You were a friend of mine. I thought you'd be great at this business. All right, Cecilia. So I, I asked you the right question and you said, sure, I'll take a look at this. And you went through the first two steps. Okay. And maybe the timing wasn't right. All right. But you're a very yeah. smart person. I can tell already. All right. You you read that and you go, wow, I, I learned something here. This is very interesting. Like I didn't know a lot of this stuff, you know. Because that's what the book does. It teaches you how to drive. It gives you an understanding. All right. But maybe the timing wasn't right for you to to want to build a business to be able to own your life. But you still maybe in this maybe you. I'm just going to pretend. You know, and this this is a pretend. Okay. I'll pretend. Maybe you. I know that you wanted to lose weight or. Um. Let, let me let me let me use a, a example from my company. All right. We have we have a particular product that is really good for people who are on like blood pressure medication or or like statin drugs or people who have high cholesterol or people who have um, who have had you know they have heart issues you know or they've had stroke issues either them or in their family 
All right. So let's just pretend for a second, maybe you were you had high blood pressure or high cholesterol. And I knew that. All right. But the timing wasn't right for you to build a business. Once you go through the first two steps and you tell me that, I'm not going to try to persuade you to get into the business. I mean, you're a big girl, right? You you know the timing's not right for you. And you just told me that. Okay. But see, in our system, Cecilia, our customers come from the people who are not interested in building a business. Okay. So in this in this pretend scenario, what I would say to you, once you you've gone through the first two steps, and once you told me, you know, the timing wasn't right, but thanks. And I planted a seed. Now it's a stone in the shoe. I got a stone inside your shoe. Okay. Which happens all the time when you do it that way, by the way, not sometimes for, for the smart people, they always go, wow. And it, network marketing is kind of like a, a good disease, like especially when it's done right. It sticks, it sticks in people's mind. It never goes away. So when their situation changes, if you stay in touch with them appropriately, a lot of times they'll end up getting into your business then. And that's why that's the number one guarantee in network marketing. Stay in touch with those smart people appropriately. Okay. But anyway, so you just told me no. So I would just say to you, hey, I appreciate you going through that. Would it be okay with you if I send you over the website to my company? You know, we, I, I know that, I know you have some, you know, you being my friend, you might've been my friend for 20 years. I know you're on those blood pressure medications. We have a particular product that might be able to help you there. There's some other great products too. There's some, you know, products in there to help people lose weight if they want to do that. There's, there's a bunch of different products. Would it be okay if I just sent you my website over and you can take a look at it as much or as little as you want. And if you have any questions, you can just get back to me. Okay. Here's what ha here's what happens in a situation like that. Number one, because you introduce your business the right way. All right. You went through those first two steps. I got a very smart, bright person in my system. I put a stone into Cecilia's shoe. That's your goal. Because you can't, if it's not the right timing, there's nothing I can do to convince or persuade you to get in. So don't even try. But I did put the stone in your shoe, which is the most important thing. And then I ask you if it was okay if I sent over my website to you. Now, most people, if, if they've gone through the first two steps, or even if they haven't, you know, if you ask them if you could send your website over because you, know, you have a relationship with them, they're your friend, they'll say, sure, send it over. Well, do you know, the ones that have gone through the first two steps, probably about 20% of those people will, uh, probably about half of those people will actually look at the website when you send it to them. And in my instance, about 20% of them end up like asking me a question about a product or purchasing a product. So see, I, so you, that, and that's the best that you can do right there, you know? So, but if you would have led, now let's turn that around. It's because we, we have the right, per, the right person who came in the right way. And I still sent you my products on the third step. You may or may not purchase the products and that's fine. But if you would have brought up products first, like you were talking about there, okay? What would have happened? Well, here's what would happen. Okay. As soon, and we talk about this in our webinars all the time, you know, 100% of the people, Cecilia, who are not in network marketing, don't understand it. 80 to 90% of the people in it don't understand it. And we're just being nice saying that it's actually like 99% of the people in it don't understand it. Okay. And you would be amazed at how many company owners, well, well-intentioned company owners, in most cases, don't understand it. They start a network marketing company and they teach their people sales. And as soon as you start talking to, that, to, to someone about a product or a service first, not like in our system, right? In our system, you learned about it what? Third, you went through the system, you understood. It's different when you look at our products after you've gone through the first five chapters. You're a different human when it comes to network marketing now. Your mindset is different, okay? But if you didn't go through that, you just sent over that product for the blood pressure and or a weight loss product or whatever. You bring that up first. Remember, 95% of the people in the world think you're trying to sell them something or they think you're trying to get them to sell something and they run the other way or they become a customer but they'll never do anything in the business because they can't see themselves doing that way. Do you see the huge difference? Why the order is so important. See, when you go through the system, like you're not going to lose any customers at all by going through our system. You're just getting them on the back end instead of on the front end. 
And when you get them on the back end, because of the order of the system, not only are they more likely to buy your product, but they're more likely to keep on buying the product because they understand network marketing. Now they're interested. They buy one product. They're like, man, that's pretty neat. I, I like that book. I like that product. Now they see another product and another product and another product. And they start yeah, but then, yeah, but then again, sorry, Jeffrey, sorry that I interrupt you. Then again, the people that don't understand the internet, if I, for example, do the detox and I do it, then people see it. So you've got two different groups. Yeah, but they're still not going to build a business. I mean, most people that come in, is look, look, how many people do you know are making enough money to own their life in network marketing? And they all, almost everybody does the business that way because- yeah. The, 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 you'll get customers. It's just like in my first company, I I, rec I recruited, note the word recruit. That's a dirty word in our language because re salespeople recruit to have people work for them. We sponsor and we go to work for them. It's it's a different thing. But in my, I, I had a great product. I could demonstrate it in 10 seconds. It blew people's mind. I got 114 people, 90% of them said they were going to build a business. After one year, I wasn't duplicated in one area. Duplication, by the way, if you don't know it, means if I sponsor you and then I help you go three levels deep, that makes me four levels deep, we're duplicated, okay? If, 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 everybody, has, um, if everybody has to have a product experience or going through detox or they use our product and, you know, I mean, what if they don't have a product experience or something like that? You know, then, then what happens is, is they, they, they think they have to have a product experience. That's the only reason why they, want, they would do the business. I mean, lots of people, if, if I get vitamin C, for example, Vitamin C is really, really, it's like an essential, it's an essential nutrient, right? If you don't have vitamin C, you'll get scurvy and you'll die, okay? But if you give vitamin C to the average person who has plenty of vitamin C in their body, they're not going to have a product experience. Does that mean vitamin C is no, no good for them? No, it doesn't mean that. It just means that they, they, they weren't lacking vitamin C. They didn't need it. So by leading with a product or a service, you're letting people... You, People think it's a selling business. You're trying to sell them something or get them to sell something. And even if you do get them, the chances of them duplicating, because 95% of the world want nothing to do with that, is slim to none. It doesn't work. So I'm not really quite sure about what you're talking about, the internet thing, because our, our, our system is based on relationships and people you know. Now, let me make a caveat with that. So many people have done network marketing so wrong for so long, okay? They are a member of the NFL club. What's the NFL club? Anybody? No I friends left. I got you. <laughs> no friends left, okay? That's what it means. And it is a legitimate problem with a lot of people today. So if you don't want to go to people that you know, because you know, you're just, you just don't want to go to that well anymore, all right? Um, uh, or, or, or you don't want to, um, you know, whether it's family or friends or whatever, uh, you know what? That's that's fine. I get it. There's ways around that. And I would want to have a conversation with my new person about it. But but if their mind's already made up, because I'm not I'm not out to persuade or convince anybody of that, anything. You know, you just want the people that like get it. You look for the right people. You show them our system. The smart ones get it. And it works. I mean, but you can build going back to the, the main uh, what I wanted you to what I want the point I wanted to get across. You can build a business through social media or you can advertise. You just have to do it the right way. And I won't get into that right now, Cecilia, because there's going to be, we'll do webinars on this and there's going to be a recording on how to build your business properly on social media. And it has nothing to do with posting products and you know letting people know how great your company is or how much money you can make and network. It has nothing to do with that. That's just a big turnoff. It has everything to do with connecting with people, building a relationship with people first on social media. And then when the timing is right, then exposing them in the appropriate way to our system, okay? When you do it that way, it's just like, you know, your best friend, you know, your friends that you had all your life. I mean, they started somewhere too. They weren't your best friends in the beginning. So if you're a member of, you know, if you're a member of the NFL club, is there a way to become real close friends with people on social media? Of course there is. You just, you know, it, it might start off with something as easy as 
if you were a Facebook friend of mine, Cecilia, for example, I don't know if, if you are or not, I, I don't know, but if you were, I mean, isn't it called Facebook friends? And then it's, but aren't you supposed to be like friends? Like that's the whole point, right? It's like, so I'm not going to come out, Cecilia, if I'd never met you and I don't know anything about you. Um, and let's just say you were one of my Facebook friends for, for whatever reason, but I noticed that you're a pretty sharp person, right? I see things you post. I see how you interact with people. And, and I go, you know what? I want to meet her. I want to meet Cecilia, you know? Well, what would I do? Would I like contact you and said, Cecilia, you got all these great attributes. I noticed, I noticed that, you know, the way you interact with people and the way people respond to you and all that stuff. And I just wanted to ask you, hey, would you be open to checking out my business? Like, I don't know about you, all right? But I could probably, because you're a sharp person, you ask questions, great questions. That tells me a lot about you. Most people don't ask any questions. They just sit back and go, oh, all right? But you're asking questions because you want to learn. And questions are the most important thing, right? So that tells me something about you, all right? Um, I would want to get to know you first. I wouldn't bring up my business at all. If it was your, if I noticed it was your anniversary, if you were married or, or maybe you posted a picture of your son or daughter or graduated from high school, or maybe you got a new puppy or a kitty cat and you posted a picture. I mean, we only post things that we are proud of, right? That we, that we want people to see. So if I think you're a pretty sharp person, right? I'm not going to come out and talk to you about my business. You don't know me. I could be a serial killer stalking you for all you know. All right. I want to get to know you first. So I'll wait to the appropriate time. And maybe it's uh, you, it's your anniversary, maybe it's your birthday. I might say, hey, you know, I might leave you a little voice you know, like on Facebook Master and your little voicemail, or or you can write it too. It doesn't matter. I usually just leave a little voicemail. And I'd say, hey, Cecilia, I just happened to be, you know, looking through Facebook. I noticed it was your birthday and I just wanted to wish you the best day. Happy, happy birthday, my friend. That's it. And then I watch how you respond to that. You know, some people don't even get back to you when you wish them a happy birthday, you know, and that could be maybe they didn't even see it. You know what I mean? So you got to cut people some slack if they don't get back to you. They might not have even heard it. Some people don't use Facebook Messenger. They have it, but they don't use it or they don't even know how to click the arrow to hear it. You know, so you can't just because they don't get back. to you doesn't mean that they're not a sharp person. So, they just, they just, so you got to be nice to people. It's all about what's warm, open and easy to talk to you. You've got to you got to care about people if you're in this business. My number one thing, if I want to make friends with you, I have to be patient. Okay, let's just say you do get back to me. Thanks, Jeffrey. I appreciate that. That was really nice. You know, we made a little connection. We're not best friends yet, but you got back to me. That impresses me. You said thank you. I want nice people in my business. Right? We made a connection. So what I do is I just jot down on a sheet of paper, Cecilia. Happy birthday. I know what that means because I do the same thing all the time. All right. And then maybe like, you know, a week out, I put it there and I, I have my little card file. I go in a week, I pull it out and I see your name, Cecilia. Happy birthday. Meaning I wished you happy birthday last week. I might go to your Facebook page and just check and see, you know, what you're doing. Maybe you posted something else that I could, you know, posted a picture of your brand new doggy that you love to death and you're hugging your doggy. I might make a comment about that. And it, but by the way, it has to be real, okay? Don't just do this to do this because people pick up on that on that stuff. You have to actually like care about people. Yeah. And I yeah. do care about people. And I would love for you to be in my business. But if you don't want to get in my business, that's okay too. I'm still going to be, I still want to be your friend. You're a nice person. So it's got to be, you got to be coming from a reality-based situation. You can't be like doing it to get something. Although we are doing it to get something in a way, it can't be just that. You know what I mean? Okay, it's really important to kind of get that across because this is truly a relationship business. You you have to you have to care about people. You have to. It's more important that that Adriana does well in her business than it is for me to do well, because Adriana and I happen to be in in the same company. And I if, if she doesn't do well, I, I won't do well. Okay, so it's like it's way more important for me to help Adriana succeed. And then it's way more important for me to help her people to see, succeed. Because if I do the right things, I'm going to succeed too. But that, but that, that that's, you don't want to be a salesperson, sign them up and let them go and pray. It's, it doesn't work most of the time. 
And secondarily, when you do it the way we teach, you know, you, you go deep with the right kinds of people, you form those bonded relationships. People never, you know, hardly ever leave. You go three, four, five levels deep in quality people the way we teach you to do. They don't leave. Where are they going to go? They're thinking, this works. These are my friends. They care about me. They spent time with me. They spent time with my friends. They gave me hope in my life. I mean, it. Imagine 525, 125, as you build a business like this with all these lovely people that came into your business on purpose because you asked the right question. You brought them in the right way. It's a beautiful business when it's done right. So I'd get to know you on Facebook and and maybe over a two a month period, two months, three months, maybe never, maybe it's six months. I mean, every situation is different. I get to know you. You get to know me. You'll know when the timing is right. Or I'll know when the timing is right. When we become friends, that you know that I'm not just out to make a buck. Because it's been six months. And I've been interacting with you on things that you care about. Your puppy, your daughter's graduation, or whatever. Now you know I'm a genuinely nice person. I know you're a genuinely nice person. I've learned more about you, right? There'll be a time when I want to probably introduce you to my business. And there's a right way to do that, you know, and that's what we teach. So with the system, there's no failing. Like people are never going to look at you as someone who just wants to get something out of them that wants to make a buck. If it's done right, it, and I, win-win, I think that win-win thing is used too much, but it truly is, you know, the, the system truly is. For anybody who wants a better life, wants to own their lifetime, money, and health, it truly is a win-win. You just got to connect with the right people and stay focused. That's it. Jeff, you know? I would like to notice something uh, because um, my way in network marketing was probably uh, like uh, most of you. Uh, firstly, the approaching uh, with the product with company. And when I start to find to, to look for something different uh, and I started to learn from uh, Don uh, and I thought that I understand it right now. Yes. Okay. But uh, you know what was my uh, greatest mistake in owning your life system, uh, doing network marketing lifestyle. It was talking too much. I would like to explain them the lifestyle approach. And this is not the way as we are doing this, we should send them the book not talk too much we are not the experts from the very beginning we are not the big sponsors like jeff or don don't do this because you also will burn your friends your warm contacts am i right jeff it's a great point i mean the more the more you talk the more people the less they do yeah the more the more they think they can't do what you're doing and the more you talk the more they think they don't have time to do what you're doing and time is the and listen close to this watch closely here time is the number one excuse what that people use not to do the business and you know what they're usually right because the way most people introduce people to the business is you know, they they talk too much they invite them to a zoom call they tell them it's a half hour it's an hour and they want to get them on another zoom call you know maybe that person wants to stay at home that night and watch their favorite tv show with their with their family and you're having them jump and jump through all these different hoops. Remember the number of people, especially the right kinds of people, they're very busy. If you take up too much of their time, they're going to tell you no. So we don't take like hardly any other time. So they can never use that excuse, right? So that's the part of the system too. It overcomes the number one, it over, over, overcomes the top three objections right out of the box. I can't sell. 95% want nothing to do with selling, or it, you don't have to sell. 95% want nothing to do with selling, so it takes care of that objection. I don't have the time. That says it right in the card. We don't take your time, right? We don't take much of your time. That answers the second uh, objection. And um, I'm afraid because I'm not an expert in it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so anybody can do it. You don't have to sell. It's not going to take a lot of your time. And it's something that they might be able to do because most of these people don't think that they can do what these salespeople are doing out there. So, you know, you're, you're, when you overcome those objections with, with a 30 second card or a one or two minute conversation, 
you know, the conversation again is time, money, and health wasn't a problem. In other words, if you had all three of them, you know, what would your life look like? By a simple conversation or the simple reading of a card, it eliminates the fears of the 95%, at least the ones that want a better life. And they're the only ones you want to talk to anyway. And by the way, the number one excuse is time. What's the number one reason that people don't get into your business? What do you think? They're different. Anybody? They don't want to sell. Uh, that yeah, that yeah, selling is part of it. But the number, the number one big reason. That's good. Good answer. They don't want to sell. But that, but that, the answer I'm going to tell you in a second, if nobody gets it, covers the I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to sell. Number one excuse is they don't have the time. Number one reason is they what? They don't what? Have friends. No, but thank you. Anybody else? That's, not, that's, that's, that's that, by the way, that's under the umbrella of the answer, having not, not enough friends. Anybody? Can you repeat the question, Jeffrey? Sorry. Yeah, the number, sure, no problem. The number one excuse that people will use for not getting into your business is I don't have the time. And that's because people usually take too much of their time. So it's a legitimate excuse, isn't it? We dig our own grave by taking too much of their time. We teach people the secret is not to talk. The less you talk, the more probability it is that the people come into your business. But the number one reason they don't come in is because they don't what? I'm not the person that likes to talk to people. Okay, again, that's under the umbrella of the, of the big answer. So that's good, that's good. All these are part of the answer. Anybody else? Let me it's, tell you. A it's a pyramid. That's that's under the answer. Yeah, that's under the answer. I don't it's, understand. <laughs> you don't understand. They don't understand it. They don't understand. You don't need a ton of friends to succeed in the business because they think it's well, a right. They don't understand that it's not going to take a lot of time because almost any everybody that ever approached them took a lot of their time. They don't understand that it's not a pyramid because they've heard things like this is a pyramid scheme. They're afraid. They're afraid that if they introduce this to their friend, they're introducing their friend as a pyramid scheme. OK, again, it goes back to the order of the system. Are those are those uh, reasons completely obliterated when they go through the system? The answer is yes. They well, are. Joe. OK, because you have the people who want something, they want a better life. We know that. That's mandatory. If they don't want something, it doesn't matter for the smartest person, the best person. They could be perfect for network marketing. If they don't want to do it, they're not going to do it. You're done. But if they do want a better life, now they got to understand network marketing because that's how they're going to get it. Okay. So that's why they go through the first five chapters, which answers all those questions that every one of you just, can you see, is it starting to come together now? You see how simple this is? It's so simple that it's that it's hard for most people. Like most people can't understand the simplicity. We do this, we do that, and we send them to the company website. And if that's all you ever do, folks, and you stay consistent and you don't quit, and when you run into a, a hurdle, you run into a bump in the road, because everybody runs into those. You go to your upline or you jump on a webinar like this and you get refreshed. Because a lot of this stuff, you'll for, you'll forget it. It, it took, you know, it's, you got to hear it a bunch of times. But eventually, you'll come around. If you stick around long enough, you'll go like, "Why did I complicate this? Why?" But it's 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 just us as human natures. We as human creatures, we we tend to complicate things a lot. This is a simple business, folks. Find out, find people who want something. Make sure they understand how they can get what they want. And then third, show them your view. And when you do it that way, you cannot lose. It's impossible. There's too many people in the world who want a better life and they don't have a clue how to do it. And we're basically like, we're, here's the way I look at it. We're basically 
there's the whole world out there that is dying of thirst and we're just giving away free water to these people here come join us we'll help you we'll work with you to help you you know how you own your life here's the water we're giving it to you for free how many people come over to your house i had landscapers out here doing work i'm going to be paying them like thousands of dollars to do this work none of them ever show up at my at my house or your house and do the landscaping for free, do they? Right? You got to pay them. Think about network marketing. We're we're giving them our time, our credibility, you know, all our years of knowledge, the time you spent in webinars, the books you read, the people you met, meet. You're giving them your heart and your soul to help them get what they want and you're doing it for free? I mean, think about it for a second. Where is that done? Nowhere. That's why network marketing is so awesome when it's understood. Okay. Yeah, I I have uh, maybe maybe we we can um, give the voice to, for Timothy for for a, a few minutes because he would like to share with us um, with some tips uh, regarding NFL clubs and how to deal with that uh, people on Facebook. Timothy, could you please share with us something? Please unmute yourself. Okay. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Ah, sorry. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> Hello, hope you're having a nice day. I really enjoyed this session, Jeff. And uh, thanks, thanks, Tim. the great question the other person just asked. That was a very nice question and I really got value from this. So um, thanks you. Um, regarding the NFL bidding on Facebook, um, ever since I understood the lifestyle approach, don't method, I have to go back on my Facebook timeline to delete all the posts i made about my company because i was using the um, product app leading with the product you know i was posting about my product company service so i had to go remove all of that because if i bring people into the system and they go check my timeline to see all of that it would be a contradiction to what i'm teaching them now so i had to remove all of that so what i learned from don system to do is lead with relationship so bringing it to the online space facebook what I do is I join Facebook group. I'm a, I, I'd already joined some group. So what I do is I just chat people up. You know, they make a comment on posts and then I love their comments. I give them a nice um, feedback, maybe like their comments, maybe say something about them, what I appreciate. Sometimes I go further to look at their timeline because uh, I think uh, we want to make friends with these people, but we don't know them. So the easiest way is checking their profile. We get to see their likes, the things they like, the things they talk about more, they post it on social media there. We can use that as, as a clue to start a conversation with them. We get to talk about those things they're interested in. And maybe over time, we can get to then make reference to something they mentioned about what they want and then offer our business. But I try not to do this at the first time I start a chat with them because it would look like the purpose of the chat was to get them in my business and that's more like sales so I allow like maybe a few days to a week to pass before i then make reference to something they said during our chats so this i mean doing it this way kind of like tells them that this person is really interested in me for the person to recall something we had discussed they're really interested in me and if they're the right ones and it's the right right timing they're most likely to take a look at the opportunity and there's so many persons we can do this with we can do this with a lot of persons in a group, you know, uh, you don't have to chat everybody, but then we can just select a few nice persons based on their comments and just have some fun with them, you know, get to know them. The purpose of this is just to help people anyway. So that's, um, that's just uh, something yeah. else I learned. Thank you for that. You know, it's, a, it's about relationships, folks. You got to get, you got to build those. You got to make that connection first. Connections equal relationships. And there's a, there's a time and place for everything and there's a time and place when to introduce people to your network marketing business don't if you don't know them don't start off with the business because then they just think you're trying to make money from them yeah, that's great thank you timothy awesome yeah thank you okay so so uh, we have over two hours of recording thank you very much um for for your uh great uh, meeting here
And uh, Jeff, uh, your next meeting will be in July. Maybe we can share with people uh, the date. It will be uh, 26th, is okay with you? Of Ju yeah, July? As of, as, of, as of right now it is, but because this next month is gonna be really, really tight, um, I, I, we can say the 26th and there's a real good chance I can hold it, but I might need to change it. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. All right. For a variety Excuse of reasons. Excuse me. Is that going to be during the weekday or? Yes. The same time, the same time, the same day, the same links. Uh, okay. Mm. Well, I have a little problem because, um, don't worry, don't worry. We have the recordings. We have live Zooms uh, on, on Facebook, so you can uh, listen once again whenever you want, okay? So uh, okay. let's put it on, on 26, and if something will change, I will inform you on Facebook. So watch uh, my profile or just join our group on Facebook, Fans of Don't Fail. We have such a close group uh, for all fans uh, from the Zooms. So. Uh, I invite you. you there and thank you very, very much for, for a great meeting. See you next time. Uh, and kisses for uh, all hacks from Poland. <laughs> would it be possible to make it on Saturdays? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, I try to, Moses, I try not to work on, well, lately I've been working on, on weekends, but mm -hmm. I want to, you, you can build uh, okay. a marketing. Yeah, I try not to do things on the weekends. I try to spend time with my family and I haven't been doing that lately, trying to get all this other stuff up and running. So, um, but, uh, so usually, no, usually not. We, but, uh, we, we, we can probably do something different because you are talking English and Spanish, I guess. <laughs> we'll make it good for you. With, with the community in the app, there's going to be a lot of people contributing there who are going to be having their own meetings based on what we teach here. So you're going to have a lot of different options. It's not just about me. There's going to be there's going to be a lot of people that that know this business like the way that I teach it. And it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. You're gonna be able to plug into a lot of things, and I'm sure a lot of them are gonna be on Saturdays. So, you know, you'll have you'll have lots of options. Did you get? Thank thank you for being here, everybody. Did you get something out of this meeting today? Were there a few things, nuggets, right? Yes. Hopefully, hopefully, because I, I you know I'm doing this for you guys. You know, thank you. Thank you so much, and blessings for everyone. Yeah. Thank thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Love you guys. Thanks for everything. And, uh, I'll see you real soon. Yeah, see you. Bye. 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 All right. Yeah. <laughs> Bye for now.